What's up, y'all? I'm Andy Story with Poster Grind, and today I'm going to show you how to create and distort a logo to kind of, you know, give this feeling of retro slash old school television screen vibes. It's a very simple and easy technique. So without further ado, let's dive on in. <laughs> All right, first things first, we're gonna wanna create or type out the name of the movie that you're working on or company logo that you're working on or whatever it is you're working on, <laughs> the typography. So go ahead and hit T on your keyboard, type it out, and then make sure that it is large enough. And now we're ready to rock. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command H and get rid of my guides, so Command H. And now we can turn this into a smart object so that it's a lot easier to go back and forth and edit this in the near future. First, let's make a copy, Command J, and then right click on your mouse or Wacom pen. Go to Convert to Smart Object. And then let's go ahead and hide that bottom layer, the, uh, the typography one, and then make sure that we are on the Smart Object layer and go on up to Filter. And then on Filter, let's go to blur gallery and go to field blur. Now field blur is a little processing heavy, meaning that it slows down your computer quite a bit. And if you have a slower one, kind of like mine, you're gonna wanna zoom out. So hitting command negative, just zoom out a little bit. The other thing is that you're gonna wanna see the guides and the dial that helps you create the blur. So make sure that you hit command H on your keyboard and bring those guides back. And now you see this dial, which allows you to play with the strength of the blur, like that. And now go ahead and move your dials around. Well, actually you can do multiple dials. That's the whole, that's the cool thing about field blur. So to make another dial, you basically just click again, and now another dial will appear. And you can place these and mess around with them or create the logo or the amount of blur that you want. So right now I'm just gonna go mess around until I find something that I think is gonna work. And once you're ready and happy with what you've created, go out to the upper middle section towards the left and hit OK. The next part is where we're gonna add the horizontal lines to basically mimic that old school VHS slash TV screen. And if you guys have learned anything up until this point, do a quick little favor and just hit that like button to help appease the YouTube algorithm. Now the interesting thing when working with certain filters like the filter galleries, sometimes you're going to have to do this and that is create a screenshot layer of all of your artwork thus far. And to do that, we can go ahead and use some hotkeys. So what I like to do is hit Shift, Option, Command, and E. And that's going to copy every layer below. And now we have this fully copied layer ready to be edited with certain filter gallery filters. The other thing is that sometimes you're gonna have to go up to mode and change your color mode to grayscale. And that's no big deal. It's gonna have to merge everything once again. So go ahead and hit merge and then go ahead and hit discard and we're ready to rock and roll. From here, go to filter, like I was saying before, to filter gallery. And then in filter gallery, let's go to halftone pattern. And then on the halftone pattern, there's a couple different pattern types. There's circle, there's dot, and then of course there's line. And we wanna be working on line and that's gonna create the horizontal lines mimicking a TV screen. And I already have my numbers in there. I have size at two and contrast at seven, but feel free to play around and see which one works better for your particular type. Then once you're ready, hit okay. To continue working, I wanna turn our image back into RGB. So I'm going back up to image mode, RGB. And now you're probably wondering how are we gonna turn this into a logo? Because right now every layer is merged and there's nothing we can really do. So if we were to try and export this into a different file on our movie poster or the logo to be able to put it on some kind of graphic or photography, it's just not gonna work. Easy workaround is by using the selection tool. So we're gonna go up to select and we're gonna go to select color range click on white with the color dropper and then make sure our fuzziness is all the way up to 200 and hit okay. And now once you have the marching ants 
go ahead to your adjustment layers and go to solid color. And on from solid color, you can either keep it at, you can turn it into a white or a black logo. And since we have our black background, we're just gonna keep it on white and hit okay. And then from here, we're just gonna go to that layer and turn it into a smart object. And then we just wanna bring back that solid color background. So go to adjustment layers and then go to black. And now we have that solid color behind our white logo. And as you can see, we have our logo ready to rock and roll. Now, if you wanna take this one step further, we can actually add a little bit more distress and texture to this logo. What I like to do is use Envato.com for an unlimited amount of downloads of their images and stock textures and stock photography and all sorts of different graphic elements and even Photoshop plugins that or actions that you can use. So this one here I picked up at Envato.com and all we really want to do is change the blend mode. So I selected on that layer and we're just going to play around with the blend mode and see if there's anything that looks cool. So this one looks cool. It's very subtle. It's not over the top. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. And I like what we got with the color burn. Now you could also go ahead and use the select color range technique one more time, or you can leave it as is and show this to your client. I hope you guys enjoyed this and thanks for watching.